Welcome to part three of the Access Control Configuration tutorial. In the first two parts, I unboxed the brand new AC42, that's our four-door controller, swapped my old AC41 and redid all the wiring. Afterwards, commissioning the device and making sure it is online and ready to take new instructions. And the next steps after we wired everything in is to logically configure doors in command itself by going through what's called the installer setup. This is something that not only can be done initially, but also can be changed as long as you have the right administrative rights. But before I do so, I wanted to recap a few fundamentals of access control that don't apply just to Verkada, but to most other access control implementations. And that is of the four components that connect to a controller. Two of them mandatory in the form of the reader, where you scan your credentials, and the lock that actually keeps the door closed, and two optional ones in the likes of the door position indicator and the request to exit. When it comes to locks, there's lots of things that you can buy, but mostly they are classified as normally open. So at rest, they don't consume power, they just need power when somebody should be opening the door or normally closed. The best example of this is a maglock which at rest needs a constant supply of electricity to magnetize and keep the door closed and if somebody badges in and it is successful or wants to get out the power will drop for a few seconds to allow the person to get in or out. And this is the reason why if you look on any of our access control units, you'll actually see terminals for both normally opened and normally closed. And while maglocks clearly are a normally closed type of device, there's no way they can magnetize without electricity, there are electric strikes out there that can play both roles depending on the outcome that you desire and allow for a harder setup to transition between the states. And the main decision between a normally open versus normally closed strike is your expectation of what happens if the electricity goes out. So if you want, for example, to cater for any emergency personnel trying to get into a building during an emergency when there's no power and you want them to have access to certain areas, this is where you'd opt for a normally closed lock because no power means that the door is open. While on the other hand, for more secure areas where you store your valuables, you want to go the other way around because you don't want to be in a position when anybody can rob you just by cutting your electricity. So this is where you'd go for a normally open lock and if the power drops, you'll need to restore it for a person to be able to access it. Leaving locks aside, we now have to provision for the card readers. As I mentioned previously, Verkada builds their own readers, that's the AD series, that allow you not only to use cards and fobs, but also your mobile phone. Just by downloading an application that's freely available for both iOS and Android, logging in, and then access it via Bluetooth Unlock. This method becomes more and more popular these days because as opposed to cards that get misplaced, broken, and lost, people tend to take care of their phones better, in most cases at least. Also, Bluetooth Unlock can work not just when you're nearby the reader, the door can actually unlock even if you're a few meters away, making it an ideal scenario for things such as parking lots where you don't want people to open the doors while it's raining, flick a badge, get soaked, and close the windows back. With Bluetooth Unlock, you can actually get a gate in the garage or in the parking lot to open automatically as long as the person is in within the 5 to 10 meters range. And although my recommendation is that most people should be looking at Verkada readers because again, Bluetooth Unlock is great, 10-year warranty is even better, and the fact that our support team can actually troubleshoot all the system end-to-end, -end, there are reasons for you to consider a third-party reader. And as long as that reader is Wigan-based versus OSDP, which is the standard that Verkada builds their readers, you will able to interoperate it. 
the main reasons for that it's one if you're budget constrained and you don't want to change your existing readers you can just swap the access controller and reuse the cables etc two if you're using a specialized card think about an hidi class which is encrypted so they will require you to use both the hid reader and the card itself or three if you're using any sort of biometrics so you can work with companies such as suprema that create their biostar readers they have their database on premise and their readers are wired via Wigand into our controllers. So if there is a match between the fingerprint and the card or the face in the card, their reader will actually send us the data so we can process it and decide if the person can enter a certain area. So just to recap, Workout Access Control can cater for all the locks out there. Doesn't matter if they're normally open, normally closed. I do suggest you work with a local installer that can understand the local regulations and make sure that your installation is compliant with not only the safety codes but also any sort of disability access and it will also work with either Vercada readers or any third-party weekend based one putting these elements to the side now let's focus on the optional ones starting with a DPI which is short for door position indicator it's a very simple circuit that when the door is closed, the circuit is closed. So the system does expect it to be normally closed in a regular state. And if somebody opens the door, the circuit breaks and the system knows that the door is open. Now, this is optional because without a DPI, you can still lock doors and you can still allow access based on the reader. But the system doesn't know the state of the door. What happens if somebody propped the door open? There was a delivery happening and when that's finished they just leave the door like that well you just spend a bunch of money on the latest generation access control but the door is wide open so the recommendation is that if you do not have dpis in place at the moment think about them because for just a fraction of the cost you will get the added benefit of knowing if any of your entrances are open or not secondly we have the request to exit and the reason why the request to exit is optional is that for certain locks we have what's called the manual egress this means that a person only has to push on the lock while they exit and the whole door opens without actually involving the access controller and this is something that can be explained by you picturing a hotel room you badge in you swipe your card the system takes a decision and unlocks the door but you don't need to do so on the way out there's no infrared sensor there's no push button all you need to do is press the handle and the door opens that's what's called manual egress and as a side note if when i mentioned the uh, locks that are not able to be operated in case of a power failure and you thought hey wait a minute how do people actually manage to get out well, in that case, you'll actually use a lock that has manual egress in order to, again, allow people to safely exit while stopping anybody else who wants to get in. And that setup is called fail safe. And that setup is called fail secure as opposed to a fail safe, which is something like a maglock. Once the power is out, then anybody can get in and out. For most scenarios out there, you do need a Rex. It comes in two main shapes around Europe, the most prevalent one is just a button that you can push and it will unlock the door for x amount of seconds while in the us uh, the infrared rexes very similar to the supermarkets are very very popular it doesn't really matter we're able to cater for both of them and you can even have two for the same door just to re-emphasize although both the rex and dpis are optional components if you want to get alerted from command for things such as door held open or door forced open you will need to have them the dpi is essential for door held open because otherwise the system does not know that the door is open to start with while the dpi plus the recs are essential for door forced open and the reason for that is that without the recs we cannot distinguish between somebody who legitimately is trying to get out by using manual egress versus somebody smashing the door and allowing themselves in so there will be certain scenarios in which you have manual egress and you don't really need the Rex to unlock the door, but you'll go and install an IR Rex just to make sure that the system knows 
that there is somebody inside trying to get out and if the door is open they shouldn't alert you for a door force open event i did pack a lot of information there if there's something that doesn't make sense please leave me a comment and i'm more than happy to help so how does this actually look like from a command perspective well back to my ac42 there's no ports configured so there's no logical doors added all i need to do is click add doors button and i get to choose between adding a regular door so that's something with a reader on the outside and a rex on the other an in and out door so this is a specific scenario where you actually have badge readers on both sides and you mandate people to not only badge in but also badge out this is again something very specific for very secure areas and obviously you need to make sure that people don't tailgate because you know i can just badge out and allow 10 other people to follow me right Auxiliary input, so this is where you can wire in things such as panic buttons and third party intercoms and lockdown outputs. So this is where you can actually use the outputs on the controller to turn on a strobe light in case a lockdown happens. So I'm gonna go ahead, click door, give the name, door one. In your case, I'll probably go for a better name. You want to make sure that if somebody picks this up, they actually know what they're talking about. And I can also add a one or two context cameras. Now, this is where the beauty of the Vercada integration comes into play because if you're adding one or two cameras, again, fully optional, you don't need Vercada cameras to have access control, you'll be able to get video confirmation of all those events. So going back to who keeps leaving the door open or who just tailgated, you're actually able to get in real time video confirmation of each of those events. Then you can upload a door thumbnail. So this can be taken from the camera that's looking at the door, uh, or this can also be a custom image. And although I'm not gonna do this now, this is something that I highly recommend because again, maybe you're an installer trying to make everything work and hand it over to the customer, or maybe you might have somebody that further down the line will pick this up as an admin. Having a door thumbnail will just make it visible and make people understand which door are you referring to. And then from here, port one is automatically selected, although I can obviously select uh, from all the three others left. Then the next thing we'll go through is through the installer setup. So this is where I define in the system how long I want the door to be unlocked in case somebody badges in. And this, that defaults to 10 seconds can be modified because in some cases the door reader might actually be very far from the door so instead of having people badge in 10 seconds elapse second 11 they press on the door it's already locked they get frustrated they get upset well we can actually put this timer to 15 and 20 seconds making sure to also cater for any sort of disabilities and people that might not be able to move so fast then you'll be turning on DPI. In my case, I have uh, a DPI already installed. And because I have a DPI, I can now monitor for door held open. So I can say that, hey, if somebody leaves this door open for more than 30 seconds, let me know because I want to make sure that I don't have any vulnerabilities in within my security perimeter. Then I'll turn on the RECs. I actually have a proper request to exit button installed. And I'll make sure that the Rex unlocks the door for a duration of five seconds. If you're wondering why we need two options, this goes back to the fact that in some cases you want to install a Rex just to get things such as door forced open, although the door itself can be exited via manual egress. So I can just turn on door forced open, and now I'll also get alerts in case there's nobody badging in the rex doesn't see anybody pressing to get out but the door opens from this i can also tie in a license plate recognition camera this is a new setting that we just released that allows you to read number plates and open gates with it and enabling things such as vercada pass bluetooth unlock so this is where you use your phone to unlock a particular door or vercada pass remote unlock so this is something that you can do from the application itself and does not even require a reader. You get presented with some doors, each of them will have an unlock button and all you need to do is press that button and open. The reason that I prefer Bluetooth unlock is that remote unlock does require you to have a working internet connection because your phone tells the cloud to unlock the door. 
while Bluetooth Unlock is a local conversation. And because the controller itself has the database built into it, it means that even if there's an internet outage, it will still be able to process entries based on the latest known configuration. If I turn Bluetooth, then I also can specify how far I need to be from the reader from immediate, which means that I basically have to touch my phone to it, to far, which again can span more than 10 meters. And if you want to tweak this, you can also go into a custom setting based on the RSSI value. I'm going to leave these two near just so I don't unlock the door from the other side of the room. This setting obviously depends on the proximity of other readers, right? So in the garage scenario, you want to make sure it's far so people don't need to get their phones out. While if you're on a busy hallway with different access control doors, you might want to put it to near or immediate because you don't want people to just have phones in their pockets, the Bluetooth is turned on and they are just unlocking doors as they go past. Last but not least, I want to make sure that it beeps on unlock because again, there's a visual indicator the reader will actually go green if you're allowed to and that beep is reassuring telling people hey actually this system is working one last thing to do and that is to add access levels and this is actually the subject of my next video because now that we have defined the door it's all up and running we need to define who can access it and at what time and this is where access levels come into use because they actually allow us to build this logic and make sure that hey IT contractors can only come here during the week, not the weekend. The manager can actually come during the weekend and can use the parking lot while a regular employee can't, right? Different companies have different rules and access levels actually allow us to do so. But that, again, is the subject of the next video.